my honest thoughts of Phuket, I didn't love it. I stand by everything I said. I was talking about Patong. It's expensive. The restaurants and bars along the beach, they're like 300 baht for a pad thai. Fuck off. I can get a better pad thai in Bangkok for 40 baht. 200 baht for a beer. And like the accommodation is expensive. So there's much more to Phuket than Patong. Welcome to Fruiting Body Podcast with your host, Brendan. Today, we have another legend of a guest. Adam is back at his keys one. Uh, he was a little hungover on the last episode. This time, we're not hungover. We're liquored. So get ready to enjoy this episode. Uh, let, a, let us tell you a little bit about who we are without me slurring, So because we're a couple beers deep. This part of this intro, we're going to explain what you can expect from this interview podcast, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's uh, absolutely amazing. So um, if you're tired of me rambling, we got timestamps. You can skip. You can see those chapters in one second. Adam's going to tell you what to expect from this podcast and what he liked the most. Uh, who are we? We are Fruiting Body. Fruiting Body is a medicinal mushroom company located on the island of Phuket. Uh, we're more mushroom lifestyle. We're not looking for that hippy dippy bullshit. Cordyceps. We got lion's mane, mind, body, and soul. Reishi. We got it all. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. I don't know. I feel like I'm really reading a teleprompter there. Yeah, Hans. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, hit the bell, do all that fun stuff. I'm going to pass it over to Adam. He's going to tell you what we talked about, what you can expect from this conversation. And without further ado, Adam, let, let, let the audience know what they're going to see. We got deep, right? We're talking like oh. personal relationships. Yeah, we got real deep. Yeah, that was good. I enjoy the format of like sitting down, having some beers. I feel like it was more of a chat between friends. Um, but yeah, we did, we did die deep. We were talking about you know, my genuine ex-girlfriend experiences, girlfriend experiences, dating. Talking about Kay. Yeah. Girl in the pink hair. Yeah. Um, we went pretty deep into like aliens. No, we didn't. <laughs> yeah, we definitely didn't. That's going to be a bit later tonight. Um, I think we were, we were more discussing about travel and living in Thailand and Thailand expenses. And, yep. um, so that they can all expect that as, as well. Uh, again, we got timestamps so you can navigate. Uh, we any, debated on some else? points. What happened? We debated on some points. Did we? The love of Phuket. The love of, oh yeah. The cost yeah, of yeah. living. Yeah, yeah, it's it's debatable here. It depends what you're looking for. Yeah. I mean, today's going to be an expensive day. So. Yeah, I feel like it's the beginning of the end. Jeez, I look like a fat ass on this camera, eh? I think it's all zoomed out. Anyways, that's still we're still in the intro. Don't worry, we're not cutting. All right. So without further ado, we're gonna get this podcast started. Uh, we're good to go, Adam. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. Let's go. Hope you enjoy. That's great. Um, we have no idea what we're gonna talk about today because we've filmed the podcast. It's been released. You were super hungover last time. Well, there's, I've been. There's more than that. So yeah. like, the night before, I went out drinking and I I went home. Like I told myself I wasn't gonna be hungover. I was gonna be on point for this. And I took myself home like just before midnight and I was like, okay, that's cool. I'll be fine. I'll be able to pull it together. And then for whatever, well, I know the reason. So I, I ate a brownie before I went to bed. And my logic at the time was like, if I get high, I'll get tired and I'll have like a super deep sleep. And then I'll wake up tomorrow feeling like fully rested and be on point. And the opposite happened. I woke up and I was like still high. And I woke up and I was like, oh shit. And I knew straight away. So I was like, I went down to the beach. I'm like, I'll go for a swim. That'll, that'll sort me out. Jumped in the water, went for a swim. Didn't work. I was like, okay, this isn't, this isn't it. So I went and go, had something to eat. Still wasn't like feeling normal. So I went for a walk. I, I tried everything. And I just like, I was, I was doomed right from the beginning. Yeah, we, should, that, we actually should have had beers before you came on. Yeah, that would have been better. Yeah, maybe. we yeah. needed a little social lubrication. <laughs> so we, we, had, we had them after and... Yeah, we had them after. A lot after. Um, I, I was hung over the next day with a podcast with John Gibbon. So like I was in your seat, Got to flip it's it around. anyone that it's looking to do podcasts hung over is nearly impossible as the host, We talked about this before as the host, it's not too bad. Cause you can kind of just probe when they, they, they talk you, well, what do you mean by that? All right. And you're not listening. You're way out of it. Um, but as the guest, it's painful because it's kind of like, you're playing dodgeball. I'm just throwing questions at you the whole time. You got to kind of keep it together. And, and you want to be insightful too. Like I want to give good answers, right? You yeah. want to perform well, and especially like creatively. 
you know, you want to show the best version of yourself. I was super disappointed with myself afterwards. I mean, you, yeah, I yeah. was like asking you to reshoot, you know, but like having watched it back, it's nowhere near as bad as I thought, but just knowing that, you know, I could have been so much better. It, it really got to me. Yeah. I think I wound you up a little after too. I'm like, yeah, you're terrible. You gotta, <laughs> we got to reshoot that one. What? So you're, you're down in Phuket. I think you got here a couple of days ago, maybe yesterday. Um, you, you can even talk about that. You can plug it a bit. Like what drove you down here? What are you doing here now? Yeah. So I got, uh, flown down here by a water park and, and Amanda. Uh, yeah water park um and it was a really cool experience so they they flew me down they put me up for a night and just asked me to make a video on on the water park so um i met up with my ex actually the girl with pink hair Kay, um and we shot a really fun video together we just hung out at the park and you know <laughs> like i'm an adult right i had a whole lot of fun there it <laughs> brings out the inner child in you yeah. great great story actually so i ran into gary there um uh roaming roaming cook. gary butler the roaming cook yeah so he's a great mate of mine and i didn't know it was just a coincidence that we were both there at the same time and he <laughs> so there's one of those slides it's like a really big slide and the floor comes away and you go flying down is, is it the one where like you're you're standing but like it's a drop floor yeah yeah yeah, in, you're yeah. Standing they have tube. them in kanchanaburi yeah and you go so fucking yeah. fast down the thing like it's for me i was like oh my god this is really fast anyway <laughs> So it goes down and then you kind of go up and around this corner. <laughs> Gary got stuck up and then like fell back down. And I'm sorry, Gary, I'm blowing him out here. But like when he told me, I was just like in tears laughing, thinking about it. <laughs> but they have the trap door there for so that. Because it's like a, you're defying gravity, essentially. Like you have to go up, loop around and then come back down. Yeah, it's not a full like loop the loop, but it's kind of, you go yeah. up on an angle. So it's, it's quite similar. And he went up and he got to the top and then slid back down backwards. And he thought it was part of the ride until he's just like stopped at the bottom and he's like, oh shit, like, is this a problem? Is someone else going to come like flying down? They must like wait till you pass. Yeah, because you imagine come, you didn't. You have to come out the other end. You'd probably yeah. die, wouldn't you? Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Because you're going so fast. Yeah, um, yeah we so want to yeah, we we do a, um, we, we were talking to them with sponsorships as well, but we'll put your, lo just give us, free passes for the for the rest of the year and me and hans and uh we'll put a little logo here i might put a sticker in the back right on the fruiting body podcast sign and uh yeah just give us a couple free passes for the year what do you think hans i don't know if that's a conflict of interest here man. with who with our current sponsor oh speaking of five star marine welcome to our sponsor so five star marine let, let me tell you about them uh five star five star marine is our sponsor um they're making this production happen we do want uh, and it's, it's Andaman, Andamanda, right? I believe so. Yeah, see, I keep saying Andaman. See, I, I have verbal dyslexia, so it is what it is. It's a confusing name. Right. I had to, like, stand right in front of the sign and read it very carefully. They, they yeah, just sponsor this. We got, so we got it five-star. Um, this is going to be our five-star official sponsor. Is, is this the shout-out now, Hans? That's it. Let, let me, let, I, I, don't, you up I don't know if it. Sean allows me drinking beers on sponsorships, but let, let's see what he says later. All right, let me tell you about Five Star Marine. No. Um, okay, so Five Star Marine, they're our sponsor. They are doing luxury VIP speedboat tours on the island of Phuket. If you're sick and tired of having to deal with a boat captain that's going to tell you where to go, you can tell them where to go. And well, not in that way. That's kind of rude. But anyways, check them out. VIP speedboat tours, Five Star Marine, at Five Star Marine Phuket. Check them out. They're the best. And thanks for the sponsorship and keeping this production rolling. Um, Okay, so back to your story at the the water park. There, you're filming um, with your your ex. You ran into Gary. Um, what else was there? Just share a little bit about that day. Yeah, it was just a fun day going on the rides. You know, like I'm a big kid at heart, and I still like I just had like way too much fun there. Um, so yeah, basically, like they did an awesome job. You know, they get, provided everything for us. They got wristbands that you load up with your money, and that's how you pay for everything. And they gave us a thousand baht each um on the wristbands and they've got like a funnily enough i ran into gary at the bar because there's a swim swim up bar there but it was just fun to go on all the rides and and you know just a yeah really fun day and it was so hot yesterday so it was a perfect day for it was that kind of the main thing driving you down here for this trip was that they were kind of sponsoring that and bringing you up and just i guess to interrupt this is not a, we're actually just genuinely talking about this it's yeah not some yeah, it's not of, a plug yeah it's not a plug <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, that's what got me down here and, and I've been wanting to come down and they hit me up and they're like, we'll fly you. So I was like, yeah, I mean, if I had to buy my own flights to come down, I mean, I still would do it at some point because I wanted to come back here and like I do enjoy it here. I wanted to come back anyway. 
but just yeah it all just worked out so they said like we'll fly you down and i was just like yeah i'm in straight away how so. does that work for content creators when sponsors connect to them with like coming in and creating content for them are there restrictions guidelines policies or is it kind of free for uh, free for all it, it varies quite a lot company to company um these guys seem pretty open to anything they just sort of said they gave me like a list of requirements like can, can you visit this ride talk about this um but it was all basic stuff that i would have done anyway so um yeah it varies a little bit company to company but these guys were super chill are, th are they thai or farang like management like who are you that dealing i with? can't work out because like sometimes in the communication like sometimes i have communication with i did a um, muay thai gym session recently and the person i was talking to was definitely thai because like the the barrier was there the communication barrier was there and you know it was the the <laughs> it was just an interesting conversation um but this time it was sort of maybe those maybe i was speaking to someone on their assistant mm. it was like sometimes it was really clear communication and then other times it was a little more challenging yeah you, yeah i guess it could just be an admin assistant or something yeah um so again we're not sure what we're going to talk about here because we covered pretty much his life story and and what how that all came about and connecting you to what you're doing here in Thailand. So I think we'll touch upon maybe a couple points from the, the past podcast and touch upon some of the recent videos you launched. And yep. so recently you kind of did like a top five scams 2023 for Phuket. How did that video come together? Cause I remember us talking about scams. I mean, I don't want to take all the credit, but yeah. <laughs> no, I'm joking. You definitely planted the seed. No, um, that was an idea I've been sitting on for a while. The last one was Pattaya scams. And that video is one of my like real best performing like evergreen videos it's like every day minimum a thousand views every single day um and it sort of fluctuates sometimes more sometimes less so i wanted to do something like that that wouldn't compete with that um because if i do another pataya scams video then i might just block that one mm. and these are all these little like ah. you know, nuances with the with the algorithm that no one has the right answers to so uh, coming here to Phuket was the perfect opportunity to do a Phuket scams one. And I got a Bangkok one mentally lined up that I want to do in the future, but I kind of want to space them out because I wasn't sure if that Phuket one would actually kill my Pattaya one. And I don't think so because it's geolocated. Yeah. No, I, I think you're creating a series at that point. I'm, that's the plan. Right. Um, because my Pattaya one's like coming up to a million views, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, this one flew it's at like i think 400k now really quickly uh, do, do you think you would do you think that like at that level like holy shit this is clicking so i'm gonna we're gonna cut in a second i'm gonna need a little bit of a wobbly pop a little social lubricant coming up but <laughs> just does that not just open the door like why don't i just go to every city in thailand canna chiburi scams uh chiang mai scams and and if those are banging out million views i mean is that not the logical move Yes and no. Like it's a it's a great short term plan, but I'm I'm playing the long game, and it's like I want people to watch my regular vlogs, um, because that's what I want to do. I don't want to, I don't want my channel to be shaped around the content that I have to do to please an audience. I want to make what I want to make, and if people watch, great. Um, and I'm already performing well enough that I'm making great money. I'm happy. I'm like having the best time ever, and it's zero impact on my life at zero pressure zero stress so while it is really tempting to chase the money and the views of that it's not a long-term sustainable mm. sustainable plan and if people subscribe to you just to watch that when you're not doing that they're like why would i want to watch you sit on a beach and drink a beer at sunset i signed up to watch you talk about all the negative but it's it's also like in the sense that like what percentage of the people watching the scam videos is like, they just love watching scam videos and which ones are like now they found you and they want to indulge in your other, uh, there has to be like a percentage of the conversion on the people watching that, yeah. that now they become viewers. So as any YouTube channel, as you're growing, I mean, isn't the objective to get most amount of subscribers as quick as possible? Yes and no. So like, yes, but you want the type of subscribers that are going to stick around. The The conversion rate on a scams video is actually surprisingly low. Um, okay. well, I, I did get a, a boost in audience, but they're kind of one-off videos that people watch. Like I've watched scam videos myself. Like I watched, oh, I don't remember what country it was in, maybe India. And this guy was riding a camel 
and it's like this really long form video of this guy getting like scammed out of, on a camel ride. And I watched the whole thing and I was like, it was a great video and I really enjoyed it. But I had no interest in watching anything else of his after. It was like the topic was so strong that that's why I watched that video. Mm. Um, so, but there is a percentage of people, like I did get a good, still got a good pickup. And then people will watch your older videos and stuff. So there is that. But if you get people that just subscribe for that and they don't watch your normal stuff, then it actually ends up hurting you. Well, I, guess, I guess like, yeah, because then you get these channels where they um, primarily f like prank, let's call them prank channels. I mean, I guess prank channels, scam channels, the pranks, there's just, it, there's more variety. How many scams are there in a city, right? Yeah. For, for pranks, you can be creative for days. But it's the same thing. Like a, once you're a prank channel, you're a prank channel. Once you're a scam channel, you're a scam channel. And if you're doing that every week, you don't want to be kind of, uh, you know, in that pigeonhole. Yeah, and if, like, the people aren't watching, then your click-through rate suffers, right? Right. So that's the very first metric that YouTube looks at is, like, does your loyal following watch the video, right? Your, your core supporters. Because if they don't watch your video, then YouTube thinks, well, the video is shit, right? If you're, like, most loyal fans don't watch it, no one's going to want to see it. So if your click-through rate's low, and this is why, like, you know, people do things like sub for sub and, like, you know, you can join groups. But that's just manipulation. Yeah, absolutely. But it ends up being the most hurtful thing you can do because you've got all these subscribers that are not watching. So now all of a sudden your click-through rate is so low. Yeah, you cannot manipulate algorithm. I used to do a, a Black Hat SEO back in like 2008. And that's the biggest thing. Um, the algorithms catch up to manipulation. So I'm yeah. talking at website uh, algo manipulation. Yeah. Um, and the best way, everyone everyone wants like the magic recipe. And it's like, just make cool, good, organic content that has value. Yeah. That, that's honest. That's the recipe. Yeah, I get asked all the time, especially from parents. You know, they'll be like, my kid wants to be a YouTuber. Like, what's the advice that you have? Um, you know, what I first say is like, tell your kid not to be a YouTuber, be a filmmaker. Like, be someone who wants to create great videos. Because if you create great videos, the rest will just come. But if you go out, I want to be a YouTuber. I want to be famous. I want to do then you're going to be forever chasing trends and there's a good chance you won't fail, uh, that you will fail. Yeah. And there's not, there's never, an, like, I, I like to watch the vidIQ guys just <clears throat> catch up on, like, the newest stuff, what's like, right. going on. And um, it, it's, that's the answer every time. It's like, how to do, does this work? Does that work? Every single answer is, it depends. Mm. Like, are we, are, are you, do, do you have a game channel? Do you have a food channel? Do you, have, like, it, you can't, like, pigeon, you can't just, uh, you know, put, um, youtubers into a box in that sense um now to to jump a a little bit ahead and you've you've pretty much pissed off all of phuket recently yeah you said hey i think your title is like fuck phuket or something yeah basically no i know i'm joking i'm, <laughs> no, I'm joking and before I, we do I that I, i'm gonna grab us a couple beers because we're gonna find out why he said fuck phuket uh, we're just going to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, uh, Five Star Marine. They're sponsoring this podcast. They're allowing us to produce this on a weekly basis. So a huge thanks. We're very grateful for them as well. Um, if you want to understand who Five Star Marine is, they are a VIP uh, speedboat tour company that you can 100% charter to yourself. That advantage of that I find in Phuket is if you're just jumping around and, you know, trying to find these speedboat tour companies, they might take you to islands or places that might not be of interest to you and maybe you can save them on gas. But Five Star, they allow you to kind of cater your own trip and go where you want to go and really create that whole tour of what exactly you are looking for specifically. I stand by everything I said in that video. Um, and I didn't say fuck Phuket. I said, I the title was... I. My honest thoughts of Phuket, uh, and in the thumbnail I said I didn't love it, and, and I stand by everything I said. I was talking about Patong, um, and I listed three things that I loved about it and three things that I disliked about it, and the three things that I loved, you know, I love the beach, uh, I love the vibe, you know, everyone's on holidays, there's a great atmosphere there, uh, and the nightlife, you know, the nightlife is awesome. The things I didn't like where it's expensive um, compared to anywhere I've been in Thailand. The places, and I know like a lot of that's around tourism, but like the, the restaurants and bars along the beach, they're like 300 baht for a pad thai. It's like, fuck off. I can get a better pad thai in Bangkok for 40 baht. Um, you said that the, a lot of the beers are like 200 baht. 200 baht for a beer. Well, so that's, that, see, I, I haven't been to Batong in four years. Hans, do you, were they always 200 baht? 
No, it's always been expensive. Has it always been 200 baht a beer? But it's not everywhere. Like, you can still get... 200 baht, jeez. No? He, he, he said 200 baht. Well, in clubs. In Okay. Okay, no, yeah. So, like, illusions and... Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And, I like, I was there for the nightlife, so, like, that that's what I'm spending money on. And, you know, there are there are more reasonably priced places, and, a lot, and the happy hour is great in places. But just... As a general thing, every, out of everywhere I've been in Thailand, it was the most expensive. Um, and, the, like, the accommodation is expensive. I'm staying now. My room is average. And it's, like, 1,500 baht a night. But there's no... But then if, if you dislike it so much, then why stay there again after you've kind of seen how awesome it is up here? Oh, see, that's a... Like, that... And that's the video I'm making today is that there's much more to Phuket than Patong. I was talking about Patong because... The, the idea of the video is to educate people. If if I went to Patong and these things weren't a surprise, then it's fine. And I went back here this time and I'm staying in Patong, but now I know these things going in, so it's fine. You know, I'm not getting here and being like, oh <coughs> shit, hotels are really expensive. Oh, I have to pay more for food and getting around like transport, like the tuk-tuk set up. That's a fucking nightmare, yeah. right? There's no bolt, no grab. What, what if, uh, can you do like kind of a price breakdown of like a typical day in Patong from like, wake up till raging till four in the morning and try to break down from that oh, point and, and like, give some pricing. If you're partying, yeah. like if you're partying, that's that's where the majority of the money goes. So like, I mean, f first off, your accommodation, you're paying minimum a thousand baht for a shithole. Right? Like a, ga like, a guest room. Yeah, a guest room above a bar in a noisy ass street. See, those used to, okay, so the back guest rooms, the pre-COVID, they were about like 500. 300, 500. Oh, 500. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember like staying here in like some three hundred baht fan room, one time. You know, so none of that's there anymore. No, like there is just flat out nothing. Like hostels are like expensive now. See, no, what I my th what I think happened. It's the same thing that happened in CoPP. It's just the fact that the market supply is not the same as pre COVID. Yeah. As in, they just don't exist anymore. Yeah. And there's more demand. Yeah. So, so like same there. thing. When we went to CoPP, I would rock up there. Every, I would rock up there every Saturday, like, oh, sorry, Friday. And yeah, I get a, a little guest room, good enough, 500, 800 baht. Pff, last time I went, 3,000. Yeah, exactly. So is it now, like, minimum, you're look, you, are you looking before you arrive? Or are you kind of just showing up and kind of going door to door? I mean, bit, that's what I used to do. Bit of both. Yeah. Yeah, I look before. Um, this one, like, I had a hotel set up for yesterday and the date was wrong. So I was like, literally last minute booking a hotel last night for that night so yeah when i was looking at that like it, it was a nightmare so to get back to your question to break down the price so okay. like 1500 for your room to stay in somewhere that's okay uh 1500 baht i mean you you get to find the cheaper places like not everywhere in patong is like you're paying 300 baht for a meal but you can find the cheaper places so breakfast be under 100 baht Lunch can be similar. Um, I like to eat Thai food. So if you're eating foreign food or like whatever, you can you can spend way more. But then drinking's where it, where it goes, right? So in the evenings, I mean, happy hour, you can get like 80 baht San Miguel light. Otherwise, around Patong and around Bangalore Road, like they start at 100 baht a beer. And then if you're going, yeah, hitting them, I mean, how many beers... Did we drink the last time we were together, right? Like Baker's dozen. Yeah. <laughs> At least. <laughs> so like it can go. And then if you go hit the clubs, like, yeah, go into Illusion. I bought I would buy a bottle in Illusion because it's just a better option, but they're still it's not cheap. Yeah, and they're probably four or five thousand or yeah, something. Yeah, and you can you can spend insane amounts of money, you know. Yeah. I I we I did a post on that or a reel and uh yeah, we got a lot of backlash on it. Um People were just, so basically like people were saying like you get these videos that come out and they're like, you can live in Thailand for a thousand dollars a month. I've made one of those videos. But it's just, it's not realistic. It's like you could. And by the end of the month, like, it's kind of like you, 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 you put yourself through a little bit of torture to do that. I would think. Yeah. Like, so, so the one I made, it was more of a, a, a challenge kind of thing. It was like, could you live here for a thousand dollars a month? And I use Bangkok as an example, and I think you can live in Bangkok much cheaper than here. Um, so I found an apartment that was 7,000 baht a month. And for whatever reason, like 
it's it's just a weird coincidence. My I pay my hot water, I pay my rent, I pay my electricity, I pay my phone and internet all within t- a two day period. It's just a coincidence the way it worked out, but it's just like a massive hit. But the advantage of that is like, it's actually just after I get paid as well. So I can knock that all out of the way and then that's my expenses for the month. So for that video, I found an apartment that was 7,000 baht for a month. I used my electricity bill, which I think was around 2,000 baht. I kind of pay around that. And my aircon's on like 24 seven pretty much. Shit. Um, you know, I'll turn it off if I'm going out for the whole day, but if I'm sort of in and out of the house, I leave it on. So yeah, around two to three thousand baht for electricity. Phone's cheap, like two fifty a month for my phone. Internet's about the same. So that's your bills. And then like I went out and I was like, okay, like remember when you're young and you're broke all the time, you budget. So like you spend fuck all during the week so that on the weekend you can go out and blow it all. So I did a similar thing. I was like, well, let's have a really cheap day, food, entertainment, whatever. So, you know, cheap breakfast street food for lunch, um, something basic for dinner. You can have three meals under 300 baht, right? And then if you, you sort of like, yeah, keep it keep it low during the week, then on the weekends you can actually have a bit to go out. You know, that's how like these English teachers survive on like 50 but days. But I feel like it, it, if you're to do it like that, uh, it's it's almost like a, it's like a backpacker's budget. It's like this mentality. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, Living in Asia so long, you, you friends that are here, the backpackers that end up just staying here, and they'll tell you stories where like, well, I want to drink six beers tonight, so I'm just going to eat a bowl of rice just to be able to <laughs> yeah, not spend yeah, money yeah. to drink that, that at time. And that's exactly what um, pre-COVID a lot of people were doing. They come on these backpacker budgets. Yeah, and, and it's the extreme, you know, like is that a sustainable thing for long term? No. no. Like, you know, you can't come over here with, 12 grand and expect to live a whole year like that. Like that's, that's unrealistic. You don't, you don't want to live like that. But if you're a simple person, you don't drink, you never know, right? If you're like, uh, if you're retiring and you want to just like sit by the beach and enjoy street food and stuff and just, and you don't drink, it would be surprisingly easy. Well, I think that those are a lot of the comments we would get that were, you know, and it was great. Like it was literally 50, 50. Yeah. And I would say the 50% of the people that are like, yeah, you can do it are retired. Now, I think it's a little bit different to be on a retiree budget because if you have no money and no income, you just run out of money for the well, rest and, of your life. And like, like if, you're, if you don't need to save for the future, right? Like if, you're, right. if the clock's ticking, then... Yeah. But I, imagine I, you're on a pension, right? And you're getting paid $1,000 a month and like you're just getting that money every month until... Whenever, until you but die. But th- those pensioners, they have to budget. They know that. They come yeah. here and they're like, I'm 60. I hope to live to 80, but I better budget to 90. Um, but, but a big part of that, that was part of the argument. It's more or less like, great, you, c- you can do your budget. Yeah, you can do 30000 baht a month. Uh, what if you get sick? What if you need to fix your motorbike? Um, and what about your visa? Like, there's so many hidden cost hits here yeah. that, like, you have to... Um, and, and, and to prepare people and explain that to them, like, don't just show up here with budgeting and tight 30,000 a month because there's hidden costs as well that are going to hit you. And if you came here with 30,000, 300,000 baht, I don't know, hundred and three hundred and twenty four thousand baht or whatever, something like that, you, you won't survive. There's no, no way. And, and discipline is by far the hardest part, right? Like when you, you've lived here for a while, like I've lived here for a while, you can relax. But when you first move to a country, you're crazy. You treat it like a holiday. You're out all the time. You're socializing. You're meeting new people. You're making new friends. You're doing all these things. I, when I first moved to Korea, that was the biggest mistake I made was I treated it like a holiday. I was out partying all the time. I was making new friends. Everything is exciting. So everything is fun. So you're doing like way too much. And it's like, you know, if you realize like I'm here for, I'm here to live. I'm here long term. You can sort of slow the pace down. You're like, I don't need to go do 10 things this week. I can do two and do some next week and go this place later. I'll get there sort of thing. And I actually made a video on that because I used to make the YouTube videos back then, not to be a YouTuber, just for fun. And when I moved to Thailand, I watched my, I think it was like after three months, I was just sort of reflecting on my three months in Korea. And I watched that video right before I moved to Thailand. And I was like, what can I learn from myself? 
And I watched that and I was like, okay, I need to just relax. I don't need to do everything right at the beginning. And that was a massive help. And I've watched, like I've got friends that have moved over here and I've seen them just fall into that same same trap of just like doing so much right away. Well, I think you need to like establish inner circles when you live abroad. Me And, and it does block out the tourist. I, I'm sure there will be a book one day that kind of uh, writes the phases of an expat and what we go through. Uh, by the end, it's just you're a sour cunt. But yeah. <laughs> that's lit, like chapter 12. I'm just an angry old man. Grumpy old man. A grumpy old man. I, I mean, that's essentially what you see half the time. But there's certain phases that I start to see where I would say after about five years, maybe four or five years, maybe more, maybe, I guess, oh shit, I've been in Asia 12 years. Okay, let's say four or five years. Before that, you you, you travel uh, all the time. Yeah, you go to the Philippines, you go to Japan, Korea, Malaysia. So once you get that all out of the way and you've done it all, then you start to meet people. And it's always new people that move to the city. And maybe you can relate to this. And they'll they'll be first moved in the city. And maybe you've only been there a couple of years. And what's there to do around here? And you're ready. All right, this is the fucking itinerary. This is where, by honestly, two years later, you're like, if you fucking ask me a question of what to do, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. But, but like you meet these people at the bar and they come in with those like very, you know, green eyes or, you know, you're out wherever at the beach. And you can tell that they're looking for the answers of like what makes this, you know, where I'm living, this location tick. And like, you know, the answers, but you're like, I just don't want to open that conversation right now. Yeah. And you're looking at it, you're looking at it from someone that's way more experienced. It's almost like a rite of passage to go through all that. You kind of need to get that out of your system that, you know, blowing your money, going out, partying all the time. And like, because also when you move somewhere, you want to make friends. Right, that's the most important thing. You need a base of friends and, and, and your circle around you. So when when you first go to somewhere and you don't know anyone, it's challenging. Um, and how do you meet people? It's usually around like going out and drinking and partying and stuff. So yeah, that's the advice that I give to people is like, uh, I can give you this advice, but it may not work because you're still going to want to do what you're going to want to do. Like, Yeah, and, but... Do, do you find at, at a certain point, like even let's say friends visiting you, um, we've gone to the wide camera. I think one of our batteries is dead. While you're up, can you get us a couple of beers? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. If, if, if you're going to wide camera and taking it easy, look at Hans making an appearance. <laughs> wow. The first, the, the only appearance ever. Um, when you have friends visiting so again, it always, there's this like, again, I, I've said this pre COVID post COVID. It's kind of like, Jesus Christ. Uh, sorry, you're, you you got to pull that. Um, just pull it in tighter. Of course, that's while we're on the wide shot. Too. Yeah, let me let me this. fix that. It's all right. No, I think we're good now, right? <clears throat> yeah, I was saying that uh, when, like when I first moved to Thailand, so. you yourself would travel and everything is new and everything was great. And wherever you went, whatever you did was the best thing ever. And you would take a mental note of that. And then someone else would ask you, you know, you've been to Krabby or Rally and what did you do? And that friend, you tell them the story and blah, blah, blah. And then three weeks later, another friend wants to come and you tell them the story. By the fourth friend, you're just like, I'm going to make a fucking document. It's called the what the fuck to do in Krabby. Yeah. And if you ask me about it, you're getting this word doc. Do, do you kind of have that same issue? Like, it's not an issue, but same experience. Yeah. And I actually... So I had someone come out recently. He was a, a really nice guy that I met in the Philippines and it was his first time in Thailand. And he wanted me to just like show him around straight away. And I was like, no, you need to experience solo travel. I was like, I'll see you in like three or four days. I'm like, you need to go. And I gave him some, I'm like, go to Khao San Road, go fucking around Nana, whatever. Like gave him some basic things to do. But I was like, go figure it out for yourself. Because like when you solo travel and you learn these things, it's the best way, but I still, yeah, I get, I get the questions all the time. You know, I've got, uh, on, on the backside of that, I've got a mate from Australia that I'm trying to convince to move out here to change up his lifestyle. So like, you know, that the age we mm. are living in the West, if you're single, um, you know, it's a very different place. Like culturally, it's so different. You become more and more isolated as your friends settle down and have kids and do the family thing. And if you choose not to be like that, 
you know, you can become quite isolated back home. So I've yeah, got a mate and I'm trying could, to keep... You could spiral, like yeah. not, in, not into something good either. Yeah, that's right. You know, like you get to a point of loneliness. It's like... I, I think boredom. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. like and, 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 you know, that goes Social hand in hand. Social life just falls apart. Yeah. Like my, when I go back to Australia, my friends that have families, I'll be like, hey, you want to go grab a burger tonight? And they're like, oh, I can't tonight. What about like next Wednesday? I'm free from, like, they're so organized, right? Like, everything. And it's like, we live a very different uh, lifestyle being single and free. So um, I'm trying to convince my mate to come out here at the moment. I'm like, you know, for who you are and what you want out of life, I feel like you're much better suited to, to come into an expat community like here. What's he d he's doing back home? Like he's, he's, he's in trade. He's, he's a social worker. Social worker. Um, so then, then it gets difficult because you can't pick that work up out here. That's right. But I think like, you know, I, I told him, I'm like, come over as an English teacher, you know, just it's a foot in the door. Everyone that came over as an English teacher ends up doing something else. Right. Yeah. I um, think it's, I think most stories, Hans, Hans, you did English teaching. I did English teaching. It's a great foot in the door. And you'll figure it out from there. You figure it out from Just there. Just don't yeah. do it for three years. I would say two max. I did one, but I knew I was doing one. But yeah, yeah like your friend, it's it's a good way to get a foot in the door, keep enough income so you don't burn through your savings, yeah. and then figure it out. Yeah, that's right. And he's been out here a few times. So I'm like, you already know people. You will already have a social life here. Plus, you will get to meet teachers like... You know, there's a there's a great community amongst people. I'm like, you know, you will meet more like minded people living here in Thailand than you will back home. How long have you been trying to convince him for? I I'm getting a sense you've had multiple <laughs> conversations and he's multiple and he and he pushes back. Yeah. No, he's he's quite open to it. I think he's uh, just I, it's, it's a massive move. It's, sorry, it's not the pushback. I, I have the same friends. It's the yeah, I'm coming. Couple months. Oh, what about next April? Oh, that, that, oh, I can't. And then every year it's like, and I could literally screenshot like seven years of I'm coming. Yeah. He hasn't said that I'm coming, but he said like, I'm very open to it. So he's actually coming out here next week. Um, and I'm going to, I've got English teacher friends and I'm going to introduce him to them so they can kind of share the experience. Um, he, I mean, it's a massive move. You did it. Everyone that has moved out here, you know, like it's so hard to do. And it's something you just have to be like one day, like, fuck it. Like, I'm all in. This is it. And you write your resignation letter and then it's go time. I th well, I think it's just you need to be <clears throat> to be able to have some sort of income. Yes. Wh whatever that is. And you need to come out with a little bit of savings. Honestly, I, I came to Asia was on a credit card. I came yeah. negative. But I I was 24 and I had a, I found an English teaching job. So I'm like... It's enough. You just need something that you're getting money every month. That's right. And then it's okay. I wouldn't, you could feel the pressure. If you come over here with zero and no job, yeah, you're, you're, you're going to feel the pressure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but like you said, like if you're determined, you'll figure it out and you just need to come over here with the, I feel like you can walk into English teacher jobs, right? If you're here and you're living here, because how many people apply and they're not here or people are here on holidays. They're like, yeah, I'll get the job, but I need to go home first. But if you're here and you live here and you apply for a job. Well, I think, I think Chiang Mai, there's probably more opportunity because it be, it's more digital nomad. Be, uh, you'll be able to transition into some sort of freelance work, whether it's a VA. I mean, you could, at least if you're in the city um, and that's, if you don't want to be an English teacher, to be honest, living in Phuket without a TEFL or a, or a, a, a degree in teaching, it could be quite rough because then you're coming here working at a Thai public school, and I know they're only getting thirty to forty thousand baht a month. And I thought they didn't they make a, a thing now? It's like minimum fifty. I I well, again six years ago. I don't well, know. yeah, and who knows if it's been enforced? Right, there may be, yeah. there may be a thing, but is it a thing? Um. Well, let's jump back and maybe some of your fans watching this. So this will be in the timestamps. Hopefully they've navigated. We'll see this on the analytics if this spikes on that part. You met up with your ex-girlfriend. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that re-love connection or non-love connection. What's going on there? It's, it's nothing, right? Like, uh, and I, I hate to refer to her as my ex because, like, we're now fantastic friends. It's, sorry, I, I will, I'm so bad with it. It's K. 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 I was going to go with K. 
I want to say girl in the pink hair, but I just feel like it's rude. So, Well, it's an accurate okay. description, right? So, <laughs> Kay, she's living here or? No, she's out here on a holiday. It was just like great timing. Uh, so I hit her up and I was like, oh, this water park. Because the water park approached me to do a video and I was like, I need a girl to do it. Like, it's boring if I just, who wants well, to watch wait, me? You're, are you single now? I'm single, yeah. She's still single? Uh, She's dating. Okay. Someone. Does that guy know that you guys met? I don't know. That's like that's 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 not a me problem. Uh, okay, so hopefully he's not watching this podcast. But I mean, like I've got no secrets, right? It's going on YouTube anyway. So. Hey, Hans, that's a teaser. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm joking. Don't no one watches our podcast. No one will see that. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you you've connected. You met up. You went over to the the water park. Hey, this is what's yeah. gonna happen. We're drinking beers on the no, podcast. That's cool. Like, I, and I like I'm happy to talk about anything. Um, I, I don't want to use the word connected because like we. We're in touch all the time. We're, we're still fantastic friends. We broke up because like, I, I, Jesus, we go down this road. So I, I for me, it's really hard to have was a Was she stabby? No, no, it's, okay. no, no, no. Okay. We broke up on fantastic terms and that's why I've been able to make, maintain a great friendship. I broke up. It's really hard for me to maintain a girlfriend because I travel so much. You know, I'm always moving around. I'm in Pattaya. I'm here. I'm going to Japan next month. You know, I just started seeing a girl in Bangkok like a couple of weeks ago and I'm like, fuck, I gotta go to Phuket next week. And then I'm back for two days in Bangkok and then I'm off to Pattaya for my birthday and then I'm back and then I'm off to Japan. And it's like, I'm always moving. So like for me, if I want a girlfriend, it's almost selfish for me to be like, yeah, I want a girlfriend, but I can only see you when it's convenient for me. So they can't come with you during this filming. Oh, I guess well, they depends. got jobs. Like, like right? if, I got a, if I got a job, like... You know, ideally, like if they're not working, like, yeah, come along with me. That's great. But the girls, they got work or they study or whatever. So yeah. that's why it's hard for me to maintain a relationship, like a, a, a boyfriend, girlfriend relationship. Yeah. So I just said, like, I think it's better we stay friends. Um, you know, I, I got an open mind. Like I'd, if she meets someone else or dates someone else, like, I'm fine. I'm not jealous or upset by it or anything. Um, and she's very much the same. So we're, we've been able to stay friends uh the challenging thing is like occasionally i'll run into her i ran into her where, where she was down in pataya for a weekend with a guy that she was seeing and i was in pataya and uh 808 club you can jump up on the stage and you can dance sort of in front of everyone i love i love dancing so i love getting up there and i didn't know she was in the club and she's walking up one side of the stage and i'm walking up the other side at the exact same time we kind of saw each other like Oh my god! Hi, and like ran over and gave each other a hug, and then we're dancing on the stage. So then that's an uncomfortable position for the guy that she's seeing. So that that's where it can get weird. Um, and, and the girl you were with was I wasn't with a the girl then. Oh so. fuck yeah! Oh that, that that's her problem. Yeah, it's not a me problem. Yeah, like yeah, I said. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah. like like that that's where I can get challenging. But like for us to hang out together, there's no, you know, we've got history and we we have a great relationship, but there's no strong feelings there like. is, is there as you're dating thai thai girls do you do you feel kind of that stereotypical pressure that everyone hears about like maybe after one month two months they start to you know look for something serious or, or, or is this does that occur or have, have you faced that before you know i think the biggest misconception is that like thai girls just want money you know, because they're they're they are hundred percent. There is a tie. tie no, no, I, I I'm not. I wouldn't. I'm not even going down that road. Forget that conversation. Yeah. I'm meaning more just like there's a point. It's age. I would say it's Russian girls as well too. It's not just saying Asians. Like Russians, boom, before thirty, that's their taking time book. Yeah. Canadian girls, who gives a shit about them? They're useless. But Thai girls, like, um, it, it no nothing to do with the money side. It's more just like okay, we're in this for a couple months three months, four months, five months, whatever. But like, what is this? Is this serious? And if it's not, it's over. That's what I'm talking about. I haven't reached that point because like it, it's been hard for me to maintain a relationship for, for that period of time. So two months. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, Kay was my longest. We were just over four months of like proper boyfriend, girlfriend. Um, and I, I don't think there was any pressure, but the, you know, it's, it's not just the, I travel all the time. It's that I would also put off travel. You know, I would, I didn't want to leave her to go do the things that I should be doing, you know? And it's like, I kind of had to make a decision. Do I want to be, 
pursuing what I'm doing of like growing YouTube and you know making. But it, is it travel for comfort, leisure, or travel for content and creation? Both. Mm. You know, I I love to travel. I love to move around. I like to be spontaneous. You know, I like to be like wake up one day and be like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna go to Krabi." You know, I I really enjoy just doing crazy things like that. Having a serious relationship makes that really challenging. Yeah, you don't have that flexibility. You can't just just wake yeah. up and run away. And then, like I said, when I do, it's selfish. And I kind of felt like a little bit of guilt from that. Like, oh, I'm just bailing on you for three days. Like, yes, it's great content and it's good for... I guess if you really treated YouTube on what I do like a job, and it's like Monday to Friday I'm doing this and the weekends is our time, like I could probably do it better, but I'm not that, I'm not that rigid and I'm not that scheduled you know but it is it a job to you still today not at all no it's it's my income source mm. that's how i make a living but like i've never felt like any responsibility towards it like i've never felt like it's a job i've never woken up and been like oh i have to make a video today yeah i mean and we discussed that before it's kind of like you're you're oh, i need another beer soon i think how many i got left too but uh is that all yeah well, I, th I think let me count two I thought I have two more then, no? Where, did I drink three? Is there a hidden beer back there? There is. You got three over Sneaky. there. Sneak error. I got one left. That's Third okay. We're almost at an hour. And then we're going to go to uh, the local beach bar, the local watering hole. And that's where it all fell apart last hey, time. Hey, it's okay. At least Third this time we went a bit Third later. Club 22. What? Club 22. What's that? It's, uh, on Lion. Lion? It's way too far, bud. Club 22 on Lion. What the fuck are you talking Next about? Next to Zana Beach Club. Yeah. Way better. Sounds Russian as and... No. Club 20. It's like where Tony's used to be. Yes. Yeah. No, which is down the road. But you're talking like a whole other fucking sub-district. You need a passport to get there. I'm not going there. <laughs> um, where was I at? Oh, yeah. So going back to and in, in, in talking about like being spontaneous without a girlfriend, I 100% agree. It's funny that you said just being spontaneous to just go to Krabby. I was living in same condo, but next door, same layout. And uh, one morning, I, I I just woke up. Must have been a Saturday morning, and I probably was like, you know, the weekend warrior type of shit. You fall into that like spiral of like, ah, oh, there's so much to do and you never do it. Swear to God, one morning, maybe four years ago, five years ago, woke up, hung over a shit. I'm like, 10 a.m. Probably went to bed at six. I'm like, that's it. I'm out of here. Just Went outside, like packed a little bag, hopped on the motorbike, and just drove to Krabby. Took three hours. Had one of the best times of my life. Yeah. The funniest part of that story was I remember leaving my condo and just like so like hungover drunk and watching these three girls with backpacks. And they're looking around, and I'm just looking at them like, this is not Patong. This is not a backpacker area. And I gave them my house key. As I drove away, I go, you can use my whole house up there. Give me your number. And uh, they were just so confused. They're like, is this guy going to rate me? Yeah. What the fuck is going on? And now, like, I still, yeah, I messaged the girl. She's super cool. N nothing. Nothing happened awesome. like that. It's her and her three friends. Literally gave them my condo, hung over, drove off to Krabby, and uh, they just stayed there for the weekend. Did, never met them. Didn't you? But I, I had the, like, street sense and, like, feeling like they were... There were three younger 25-year-old Polish girls. Like, I'm like, these girls, you know, they're not doing fucking nose beers off the fucking whatever. Well, for me, this is what life is all about, right? When you have these, like, random experiences, it usually comes from spontaneity, right? When you, if you do something on a whim, you have these incredible experiences. And when you have them, it's like, man, if I didn't, if I just slept in that day and just ordered fucking grab to my house, I would have missed all that. So... I welcome any, like, if a weird offer comes up, I'm like, let's do it. Because who knows where this is going, right? Like, I went to Isan a little while ago um, with one of my friends. We were just, I'd done a live stream that night and it was kind of a similar deal. Like, we were just, like, smashing beers on a live stream. And I went out, ran into one of my friends when I was out. And she came back to my place and we were, like, drinking more. And then she was telling me I, was, I live in Surin in Isan. And I was like, oh, I'd love to go there sometime. And she said, well, let's go. And I was like, all right, you want to go tomorrow? Jokingly. She's like, we can. So I'm like there drunk, 4 a.m., like booking flights. And we've just gone straight to the airport, jumped on the first flight. And I spent 
a full weekend, like a long weekend with this incredible family. And this is like one of those experiences that I remember forever. You know, like I went to Surin, I spent, I stayed in like a family home with a whole entire family. Um, they showed me how they live, how they work, you know, they're all, they, they do fishing. And I just, this incredible experience. And it's like, had I just stayed home that night, I would have missed that. And, and then you get the kind of the flip stories as well. Meaning I hear you on that one. And sometimes you do them and you get to the spot and you're like, fuck. <laughs> like, I haven't had that yet. I've, I've, I've had a couple where oh, I can, I've, a couple I've had like that. I've had a buddy here a couple nights. You're like, yeah, it's 4am. Let's fly to Bury Ram. Let's go tomorrow. And then, well, thank God you don't. But yeah, again, who knows? Maybe those would have been like unreal experiences. Yeah. And I think even if it's not all that you thought it was going to be, you're still somewhere new. I would rather walk down a, a random street in Buriram mm. than walk down my street in Bangkok. Uh, to ask a question before I get a beer, I'm probably getting a bit drunk now and I can feel it. I'm getting no, rambly. Let's let's, let's um, ramp this up. Before I, I'm going to go grab a, hide my feet, grab a drink. Um, the question is before we cut, the, and it, it's more an, an idea. It's, when you live in these places, it could be Bangkok, it could be Phuket. So like, let's say living in Phuket, we have Krabi. And the spontaneity is great to go once, but not five times. What is the limit? Meaning like, well, now it's not as spontaneous. Yes, you're going to go, but you know everything to expect. And I guess you can feel that also like, like when you're living in Bangkok as well. So it's when does spontaneity start to run dry is the question based on the location you're going to because you're also limited on the locations where you live. And that's a great question because this is something I've also thought about. So I think is, for me, Pattaya is the place that I go to quite frequently. Living in Bangkok, it's an hour and a bit away. And you can take a bus and be there in like for 120, 130 baht to get a bus down there and you're there in an hour and a half. And for me, I actually edit my videos on the bus. So I would, if I wasn't on that bus, I'd be sitting at home editing anyway. So it's kind of like, I haven't lost that time in a sense. Um, the, the way I overcome that is to treat, and, and it does lose spontaneity and like something new, but find a way to treat yourself. So like if I go to Pattaya, it's to party. Whereas like when I live in Bangkok, I don't go out that much. I don't drink that much. I don't party all that much. Hardly at all. I haven't been out all year this year in, in Bangkok once. Um, and I'll save that up. I'll be sort of living a normal life in Bangkok. And then when I do go to Pattaya, it's like, all right, let's, it's time to go nuts and let's have let's go on a four-day bender. And that can be a whole lot of fun. Yeah, it's nothing new or whatever, but if I haven't been out partying for a few weeks, I still really enjoy that experience. Yeah, but, but it's it's kind of uh, – you totally lost track there. I feel – Huh? <laughs> no, I mean, meaning like um, – I didn't answer the question. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part is when you call out the guest. You didn't fucking answer. No, I'm joking. No, but it's more like um, going to Pattaya and – you're, you're still going on that, that adventure. And I, I think maybe I, I'm walking myself through the answer on my own as well. It, I guess the only, like, the spontaneity is there. The mystery might not be there in terms of the region, the location, right. the, the side street, the random street. You know all the streets. Like, you, yeah. you visually mapped it. But there still is the mystery of the experience and the people that you'll meet because you still will never know. And, and that's kind of what you're leaning on as well, saying more like you're still able to kind of go from Bangkok to go to there to, to kind of save up for that, you know, plan. I don't see. I even lost the fucking point. This was liquor. Liquor's in charge now, podcast. Well, you know, it's a tough question. Like, yeah. because, you know, there is no real answer. Like, how do you find uh, new excitement in something that you've done many times? It's challenging. And for me, it's the like, if I find a new excitement in going to Pattaya as an example, it'll be the people. Maybe yeah. I'll meet someone this time that will change the future or change. You know, you know I went down there uh, a while back and I met a girl and she is, I never actually went through it. She's a tattoo artist. And she was like, we became really close. And she was like, let me give you your first tattoo. And she was going to do it for free. I chickened out at the last, I don't have any tattoos. Uh, I don't necessarily... I'm open to having tattoos now, but for, for the longest time, I didn't want them. 
because like we, I went through this phase or, or my circle went through this phase when we were young in Australia and like, so all of a sudden like everyone's getting them and everyone had tattoos. And if everyone's doing something, I don't want to do it. I yeah. hate jumping on trends. I hate following people. I hate doing something because it's the thing to do. I'm not a fan of tattoos, sorry. Yeah, so I never got one, but I met this girl and it was just like, I was on a night out and I met her and I, I love that stuff. It's like covered in tattoos, sexy. I like if they are, I don't need to be. Yeah, and, and this is Very exactly- Very like Larry David response. That, that was exactly my, my, my feelings. And as we became like closer and better friends, she had this really cool one that I was like, fuck, if I ever did get a tattoo, that's a really cool one. So she had like on, on a wrist across here, it was just like what you'd see on a remote. There was like a play button, a pause button, a fast forward, mm. just that. Um, and I was like, oh, that almost works for like my life. I'm a YouTuber, right? Like the play button thing. And I was like, I could get that. And it's just like a little one across your wrist. And she's like, I'll do it for you for free. Like, and I, I very nearly did it. Mm. But these are the experiences, right? It's, it's based around the people. Like I didn't go through with it, but had I done with that, had I done it, that one experience from meeting this one person out randomly would have changed a, a part about me. Yeah, and, and these are the, the, the these memories you'll you'll kind of reflect on as well. It's exactly. always the spontaneities. But I, I guess as like thinking about it a bit deeper, it's like maybe sometimes philosophically, maybe sometimes that spontaneity spontaneity going out. Oh, we've been on this fucking topic too long. Spontaneity going out that 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 mystery that you're looking for. Maybe it's not always about you, and and you're giving it to someone else. Well, and making relationships, right? Yeah, I I think. Like for me personally, like I, there's a point in time where I would go to CoPP every weekend. It had nothing to do with CoPP. It just had to do with the fact that like I loved the feeling where like I could go on Thursday or f let's call Friday at 11 a.m. That was the ferry. I would get there at like Friday. Like I'd be on PP Princess in the pool at like 3 p.m. I got a crazy scar cracking my head open there, drunk. But I've been there a hundred times every single week. It had nothing to do with the island. It just had to do, I'm gonna go there and I would go by myself because I, I just want to do my own thing and just meet people and just rage for like three. I come back Sunday night. So about uh Friday, Saturday, whatever. Amazing. And, yeah. and that that was it. It was the connection, the experience. Can I do it now? Even if I didn't have a girlfriend, I think there's a point where you just get a bit worn out too. Yeah, but you know, like, with very, very fortunate, and you know, this is something I remind myself of frequently, is we're very fortunate to live here, for one, right? The life we live most days is what people do when they go on holidays. And, and you need to really, like, grasp that and appreciate that because, like, the average person will work you know, the majority of the year to have like a four week holiday. I think Winston Churchill said that. And and come <laughs> like mine is thicker light, right? Like, <laughs> but like you know, people wait all year to have yeah. these experiences. And it's something that like something that you're now bored of is like if you you really take that in and appreciate it, it's like people would kill to be here right now. And and it's those experiences that come along with it that you know, that's exciting. And, and you need to remind yourself because it's so easy for you to be like, oh, wow, another sunset on the beach. And it's like, hang on. This is, I'm sitting on a beach now drinking a beer at sunset. Whereas like if I was living my old life, I'd probably be fucking answering emails right now. Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, I, I get a bit sour grapes at times. and I, You got to check yourself. It's the same thing. I don't thing. think it's sour though. You well, do, it just becomes normal. Well, I, I don't know. I there must be like a, a like a psychological explanation for it. Like again, coming into CoPP Friday night, the first ten times great. By the twelfth or fifteenth time, you get a bit sour because you're coming in and people are taking their pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like oh, it's busy this time. Oh, I guess so. We're we're going, and then you get people coming up and like you you know how to like navigate it like an airport. You know like. Okay, shit, we're coming around the rock. Okay, I got to get to the front of the boat and I need to prepare my 20 baht to get on the island. And then you get people looking, oh, why is that guy got 20 baht? And next thing you know, now you're making friends. 
Well, you need 20 baht to get in, but I know a secret so you don't have to pay 20 baht and we can go this way. We just say we work at Barracuda Scuba and we'll sneak in. Now I'm with these three fucking Liverpool lads. We're getting liquored and oh, that's, we can't get too much deeper into the story because we got a younger audience. But the point is like that part when you're, you're going through those experiences, you, you've, it's almost like riding a bike. But you're, you watch other people through their lenses and they're just, you don't understand it's their first time. And when you see it, you're just like, yeah, there's that, there's Maya Bay again. And it's, it's, I think we're just too, I'm too spoiled for sure. And, and you don't start to appreciate it a, a little bit as well. And I've had that, and I'll, I'll end it on this note, not the podcast, but my point, because I'm a fucking rambling lunatic. No, you're good. Pause for effect. Um, when you're starting to come into these places like co PP, you start to underappreciate like the value of, of what you're actually experiencing itself. And you, you start to forget like where you came from. And if friends are visiting as well, like what they're seeing, it's really hard to put on the tourist lenses when you've seen it so much. I think that's the best way to explain it. Yeah. And you know, I, I, in so many of my videos, I go have like a beer at sunset. And, and this is something that I, I forcefully do. I love it. I grew up on the East Coast, so when I, I never got to see the sunset over the water. So for me, I love natural beauty. And like sitting on the beach and watching the sun going down and seeing the sky change in color, like I love that shit. But when I do that, I make a really conscious effort. I put my phone away. I, sometimes I'm listening to music. Actually, the majority of the time I'm listening to music. But I make a conscious effort to appreciate everything that I have in that moment. Because it's so easy to be like, yeah, the sun's setting again and I'm sitting on the beach. That's like, hang on. No, I'm sitting on the beach and the sun's setting. Like, this is fucking amazing. So, yeah, I think you really need to... Change your mindset a bit. Yeah, yeah because, it, like, it is so normal, you know. And, right. and I'll, like, make an Instagram story and I know, like, everyone that lives... So when I go to Pattaya or if I stay in Jontian, like, especially this time of year, you get it here. Like, these incredible sunsets, right? And I'll, po I'll post it as a story and I see like everyone that comments is like not from Thailand. Yeah. They're like, holy shit. Like, why is the sky purple? It's like, that's what happens. But yeah, yeah it's if you hard live to here and you see it. Yeah. Every you, day, you start to forget about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, 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 I lived when I lived in China, I lived with the Brazilian girl and she lived on a beach in Brazil for her whole life. And when we lived in China, we lived in the city and we would only come to Thailand or Philippines like twice a year max maybe three times and every time i got there i'm like you don't love the beach like i'm so happy to be here yeah. right now i've been in the city and she's like ah, i don't really care and she would tell me stories she would say like i couldn't comprehend it i couldn't at that time she would say oh she knows who she is if she's watching but she would say something like you don't understand like i lived on the beach my whole life she's like there were times i would be on the, living on the beach and i wouldn't go to the ocean nor the sand for five months six months i just there was no reason at the time. And I would respond like, are you, how would you not go? I swear to, I live on the beach. I've had three months where I've never stepped on the sand. Just life goes too fast. Sometimes you're working, you're going, you go to the gym, you're eating, you're going and, and just, it doesn't, you don't, there's no drive to do it. So I guess the point of that story is it's you, you need, there's no point. We're drunk. All right. But you know, like that's why the moving around is important. You know? And that's why I say I like to travel so much is because like, <laughs> to go experience that i live in bangkok in like this is one of the craziest cities in the world right and then i love to go to the beach to get that difference and then i lo like i love to come here like this is even though i said i don't love it i still really enjoy it and i'm back and yeah, I will continue that was all clickbait back. that's all right though we'll we'll, we'll forgive you We're, click wow i I'm, it wasn't clickbait because i like that's a line but and I stand by everything I said. In I video. hope all your videos say "fuck Phuket" because there's too many goddamn people here. So if you can at least tell your audience never to come here, that ah. Hans, me, me and Hans are like absolutely no. I I love the fact that people. Well, I I don't like Phuket because of Patong. I'm like just Good. share that mentality. Yeah. Because where we live, we don't want you to know about it. Well, and I bet it was amazing like what, a year ago. Oh. Two years no, ago, it was deserted. Like, yeah. just me and a buddy. Shout out Lex. He's been on the podcast a couple times. Actually, Lex designed that logo. Uh, one of my buddies, he was locked down here for um, two years. Um, yeah, he did the logo. Great guy. 
Uh, I'm almost out of beers. I got to take a piss. Um, before we end it on a final note, um, you got you got another topic to discuss? Let's. I'm getting a bit mumbly. Have I got a topic to discuss? I don't fucking know. I'm getting li- I'm getting liquored now. Well, well I want to go down. We're gonna go down to the local, back to Easy Bar area, and we'll slam and a lot back. And I'm supposed to be on Tim Newton's show tomorrow morning. So if you see me there or I'll not, I'll get some payback. Well, actually, I kind of <laughs> got that last time. Like the last time I came, I was I was a mess coming on your podcast, and I, I was so bummed about it. And that then when I knew that you were going to be hungover, that because you had them on the following day, right? That was terrible. And when I knew that you were going to be hungover, I felt better about it. But yeah, you're going to be up early tomorrow. Yeah, I got to be there at eight. I could cancel. You'd probably be pissed. No, you don't want to cancel. I could send Hans. He won't know that. He won't know the difference. Hans is still sitting on his. First Are beer, you on your? F- you haven't way. even cracked the other one. This is my second beer. What? There's the other one. All right, Hans coming to the beach. Um, all right, right shout out to our sponsor, beer. Derek at the local. <laughs> That's where we're going, um, or around that area. Before we wrap it up, let us know in the comments how uh, if you liked it or you didn't. Or I don't fucking know. Do whatever you want. Uh, let's shut it back to Adam, and this is my like get me the fuck off the podcast ending. Um, that's your camera there? Yeah. Okay. We're going to end this now. I got to I got to take a bathroom break. That's cool. Thanks for having me, man. I enjoyed this one. I enjoyed this one a lot uh, a lot a lot much more. That's, much more than the last that is one. definitely English. <laughs> <laughs> but that's where we're at, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. It's great. I the, like the, these. It's, like it's the have, perfect have time some, to aim it when you're some. just like, "All right, I'm done with this." Yeah, a lot much more. That's yeah, a lot much words. more. Um check them out on YouTube. It is uh, Chris Parker, retired look, working for you at that. And you can find out uh, Chris Parker over here. All right, we're out.